Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my public YouTube channel. Today, I have something that is very significant that it is that I am going to be speaking about. This is something that I don't always share publicly. I do this every once in a while for certain major events that take place when it comes to occultism and when it comes to certain ritualistic practices. So in this today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a ritual that it is that I recently performed from recording, you know, while I'm recording this video, this is literally the day after, but I recently performed a ritual on October 16th and I performed this ritual in South Beach, Miami, and it was very significant. There was a lot of different symbolism and some pretty massive things actually manifested on a collective level. And the ritual itself was designed for myself to be a deep commitment to the self-development process, the inner healing process, and aligning completely with the authentic self. Now, through the principle of as within, as without, this is also going to have a collective effect as well. And I also opened up a Stargate at a specific location in Miami known as the 1111 Garage on Lincoln Road. So I performed this ritual and some pretty significant things, you could almost say supernatural things, manifested very shortly after. It was very powerful. And I do wholeheartedly believe this is going to have a significant impact and influence on the mass collective at large in a healthy way. So I'm going to be explaining a little bit of this ritual that I performed and some of the things that even manifested during this ritual. I'm going to show you actual video that I recorded while performing this ritual and some of the crazy subtle things that manifested throughout it. And I'm even going to show you a mass collective event that took place as I personally believe a byproduct of this ritual that I performed. So if you want to come on this journey with me, then I highly recommend that you stay tuned for the rest of the video and I will see you on the other side. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. So I went to South Beach, Miami on the 16th of October. This is yesterday from today. This was something very intuitive for me. I felt led to go to Miami. I didn't know 100% like I didn't know 100% why I was being led to go there on this day specifically, but I was led. There must be something very significant to the numerology of October 16th, 2024. And I'm sure there's probably some pretty significant astrological events and sequences that are taking place right now. I'm sure that I was probably in alignment with some of those astrological sequences. So with that being said, I live about three hours away from Miami. So I decided that I was going to go down there and I was going to do a ritual. Now, I didn't know 100% sure what exactly I was going to do, but I was led to basically create a ritual that was going to be designed to be a commitment to myself. Okay. So this was a commitment to myself in regards to committing to my highest potential, committing to being the most authentic version of myself, committing to honoring my process in the way that I need to be honoring it, and allowing the things that are no longer working with me and are no longer serving me in my process to sort of be let go and to dissolve out of my life. 
This was the general foundation of what this ritual was designed around. So when I got to my condo, after I went for my morning walk, I created the ritual. I went through a similar process of developing this ritual that I teach on the Patreon. For those of you that are looking into the magic training course and also take advantage of some of the exclusive content over there. So I created this commitment and then at the bottom, I left room for a signature and I signed it. Next thing I was led to bring with was incense, a lighter, a smoky quartz crystal, my skull ring from 2019 of when I initiated myself within the clip off. It was the first ring that I ever purchased. I was led to bring that with. I brought my incense holder, which is like a little pyramid. And then I brought a little tool so that I could prick my finger and draw blood. So I took all of this. Oh, and then the sigil, the universe B ritual sigil. So I had my paper with the commitment on one side and then the sigil was on the other side. So I was intuitively led to take all these little items and then bring them to South Beach, Miami. The first intuitive guidance I was being drawn towards was garage 1111 on Lincoln Road in Miami. It's kind of like where the outdoor shopping section is and it's right across from the AMC movie theater. A lot of people don't know about it, but there is a, this is literally, this garage is, they call it, it is literally called the 1111 garage and it is a literal stargate. The way that the garage is formed, everything about it, the numerology, the location, it is a energetic stargate. And there has actually been some major celebrities that have performed music videos in this garage as well. So there's actually like a collective energetic correspondence and a collective charge from it. There was Drake and Chris Brown and even other artists have used this garage for music videos. So with that being said, I was led to going to this garage and going up to the seventh floor, which is a private floor. You're not supposed to go there, but I was led to do it there. So I got to Miami. I went on my mission. I went to this garage, went to the seventh floor. As I got to the seventh floor, I kind of found a space where I was going to sit trying to kind of hide myself just in case the security tr tried to come get me. I sat down. I pulled out all my tools. I read over my commitment. I got the incense stick out, ready to go. I got my lighter out. I pricked my finger once I read over the commitment. It was very, very deep. I was really connecting with my emotions, connecting with my intention, you know, sort of visualizing like what this commitment means for me and how this is like something really significant. I opened up the garage as a stargate. I asked that it opens as a stargate. I visualized it as a stargate. I called in energies of the Klipoth and energies of the Sephiroth. I called in energetic support from all angles, angels, demons to come forward, to come through the stargate and enter into my body and enter into my process. And then once the stargate was open, that's when I went through reading off the commitment. Once I finished with the commitment, I read the commitment three times. And when I finished with it, I pricked my finger. I put blood on the universe B sigil. I put blood on my name. And then right when I did that, oh, and then I put blood on the incense stick. I didn't light it yet. Right when I finished putting blood on my signature, the security guard came right around the corner. He said, hey man, what are you doing here? And he was, he was a good guy. He was a nice guy about it. But he basically told me I had to leave. And I was like, okay. And I started kind of talking to him a little bit, just trying to get a little bit of a understanding of who he is and whatnot and just picking his mind a little bit. Because um, it was kind of awkward. I was literally putting blood on my name right when he turned the corner and he saw me like kind of sitting there. I, I had no idea he was going to find me. And uh, he was just, he gave me my space to kind of pack my stuff up, which was cool. And then I asked him some questions and whatnot. And then he ended up saying that, 
the garage itself, the lower portion of the garage is owned by a different company than the upper portion of the garage. So he said the upper portion, the reason why it's private is because it's private, uh, privately owned property. And there is a person that literally owns that whole top floor, whereas the bottom piece is owned by someone else or a different company. And he mentioned a word, which was the name of the company that owned the bottom piece. And he said, yes, their, their name is Legacy. The company's name was Legacy. And it was just so symbolic to me in that moment because, you know, as I'm making this really deep commitment to myself and my inner process and stepping into my most authentic self, and then he mentions, like out of this random conversation we have, he mentioned that the name Legacy, it really struck a chord for me. It made me feel like, wow, this is symbolism that is coming through not by chance. This is something coming through almost meant to show me what it is that I'm energetically connecting with here. So I thought that that was really cool because, you know, of course, connecting with your highest potential, that is going to be the representation of leaving the legacy that you're here to leave. So I pack my stuff up and now I'm thinking, okay, what, where, okay, so I'm clearly, I'm not meant to burn the stuff here. I'm not meant to like finalize the ritual here. So obviously I'm meant to go somewhere else, but I had just put blood on the, like all the things I needed to. So that was the interesting part. Right when I finished that, that's when he came around the corner. So I pack my stuff up. I asked him, is it cool if I walk down the garage in a spiral? He was like, yeah, that's fine. I did that because it's a ritual. So I'm walking down the garage, charging it with my energetic resonance, seeing it as a stargate, as I'm spiraling down the staircase. So going from the top, spiraling down. And I, of course, as I'm walking down, I see a Bentley. There's a really nice Bentley that's parked in the garage. And the, the symbol on the Bentley is a big B. And immediately my mind goes to universe B when I saw that. And I end up leaving that garage. And immediately my intuition starts giving me a knowing and it starts flashing awareness to me this is what where i'm supposed to go next so it flashes 11th street south beach miami ocean drive so i follow it and i'm led to go to the beach and burn everything there and finish the ritual there so what i do is i walk down to south beach ocean drive and i get to 11th street once i hit 11th street and actually right before 11th street it was 12th street 12th street has a rainbow road. So the road is actually rainbow and that really caught my attention. And then right when I got to 11th street, it was the place that I was going to do the ritual. And it was really interesting because they were doing a lot of construction kind of like on the beach at the beach side of 11th street. So there wasn't that many people on 11th street, like walking into the ocean. So you kind of had to walk around some like wiring and I walked around it. And as I got there, there was like, you know, Miami's beach is usually pretty busy, but on this street specifically, it was not that busy because they were doing that construction. So it literally worked out perfectly. And then for those of you that know about Miami, the beach is long too. So I kind of was able to kind of create my own space. Even though there was other people around me, I created my own space and I was able to do this ritual. So immediately I found my spot. I start digging a hole in the sand because I know that I'm going to be burning the commitments in this hole. So I start digging this hole in the sand. I actually end up putting my incense stick in the hole because it was too windy to light. And I start with lighting the incense stick. I connect with the sigil, the universe be sigil on the commitment. And I really start going into a deep visualization of this commitment that I'm making again. I'm like connecting with my body. I'm letting go. I'm letting everything flow. I'm realizing this is a big deal that I'm making here. This is a big shift that I'm initiating for myself. Like I'm committing to my highest timeline so that I can live my life in the way that is most authentic to who I truly am. That's a big deal. That's not something small. I'm connecting with it. I'm visualizing what that looks like. I'm visualizing some of the things I'm going to have to let go of. Some of the things I'm going to have to start working, working on and embracing. And then I start visualizing 
like a gateway, like an actual gateway opening up, like an arch. I can just like see this arch kind of lifting out of the ground as I'm on the beach and as I'm in my spot and I'm just seeing it like rise there. And it's something that was really significant, but it felt like energies were passing through this gateway and then moving through back and forth, like energies were going in and coming out of it. So I know I opened something really deep inside of myself, and it also had an external manifestation in regards to the energetic planes on our planet. So I start burning the paper, the commitment, and I'm sitting there and the commitment, it was so interesting, but the commitment as it was burning, usually when I burn stuff, it burns pretty quickly and then it's done. It was the slowest burn I have ever seen in my life. And it literally created all this smoke. So I'm sitting there doing this ritual. There's other people on the beach and this like hole in the sand in front of me is smoking like a mat, like a madman. And it was the longest burn. It literally took like a full two minutes for the paper to finally be burned. It was like just completely slowly burning. And I was meant to sit there and just feel through it. Like people were looking at me like, what is this guy doing? Like what's going on over there? And I'm just sitting there and I'm like in a state of just kind of release and let go. And I'm connecting with everything. And I'm visual, once again, I'm visualizing that gateway. I'm, I'm realizing like I'm linking more into my authentic self here. And then once everything finally finished burning, I was also led to taking that smoky quartz crystal, which is a crystal that I purchased when I was in San Diego. And I used to use it all the time. I used to carry it on me all the time. I took this crystal, I put it in the hole in the sand. And once the commitment was finished burning, I also actually had some of my blood on that crystal as well. I then buried it. I buried everything. So I buried the incense stick, which was halfway burnt. The commitment that was in the, the hole in the sand that was now ashes. And then the crystal, all that got buried. So I buried it. And then once I finished burying it, I was intuitively led to like doing something like nothing, like none of this do is documented. This was all instinctual and intuitive. The next thing I did is I created a spiral over the sand where I burned. So I went clockwise and then I went counterclockwise. And then I created an arch as if it was like a gateway. And then I was led to taking my, uh, my right hand and placing it on the sand. And it was like, I was visualizing my energy transferring through my body, going into the sand, going into the ground, basically entering into the earth ley line on the beach there. It was so significant. Like it felt very, it felt powerful. I could feel it. Like my energy was transferring there. And then I was led to putting my left hand down. So I removed my right hand and put my left hand down. And now I'm absorbing energy from the ground. I'm pulling it in. And then once that was done, then I was led to taking both of my hands and putting them down together. So I had both my hands down. It was kind of like a balanced feeling of giving and receiving. And then I just sat there for a little bit of time. I probably sat there for about 10, 15 minutes, just connecting with everything, just being present in the moment. Then I was led to standing up and then going to the ocean to put my hands in it. So as I stand up, I start walking over to the ocean. I put my hands by the water and this little wave comes right up to wash my hands. And then I remove my hands and I, it felt like, what I needed to do was done. I walk right back to where I did the, the burying and the ritual and I see my handprint and there's a literal feather from one of the Seahawks that was on my handprint. I will literally show you a clip of this on this video. All right, so I just did a ritual here in South Beach, Miami. We're on 11th Street. The interesting thing is I literally just did a ritual here 
when I finished, I walked to the ocean, came back, and there's literally a feather sitting right on my handprint. I did not put that there. It flew right on my handprint when I left. So that's definitely very symbolic there, but there's the seagulls. I'm recording this because I'm tapping every single person who views this and observes this to add into this ritual here, simply through observation, simply through energetic transfer. All right, the intention is commitment to your most authentic self, commitment to your highest potential, whatever that looks like for you. There was literally a feather that had landed perfectly on my handprint. I did not place it there. Nothing else did that other than the energetic resonance of this ritual that I was doing and how that feather needed to be there. Now, the feather is an interesting symbol. It's this, uh, the feather is a representation of the element of air. Flying air. You think of the feather, you think of thoughts. For the element of air, I should say, is represented by the thoughts, the mind, the belief system. Okay, so that was symbolic. Once I finished, I start walking back to the Ocean Drive Street, 11th Street. On that strip, as I'm leaving the ritual, there is about nine police officers that are surrounding a man who is laying on the ground because he fell. And this is a guy that was like a little bit older, but he also was definitely high on some sort of drugs. And he had nine officers surrounding him. And then an ambulance pulls right up, right when I get there on the 11th street, right after I finished burning everything. I will show you another clip of that taking place. Right when I'm finished, 11th street, look what happens. Right when it's done, something happens right on the street. I'd say, you know, it's about to be transformative. All right. All right. The energy's in motion. Let's do it. Now, whenever you have these experiences manifest, first thing, this is not by coincidence. Okay, the fact that I just finished this ritual and now there is this form of upheaval or surfacing of repressed energy, we could almost say chaos. These things are very common when you are doing occult rituals, especially when you're utilizing some of the darker energies that reside within the unconscious mind. So all of this energy that is being drawn to 11th Street because this whole scene is taking place this plays a very big role in some of the manifestation of this ritual that it was that I was doing. And of course, this guy seemed like he was struggling with drugs and his body is basically bringing him through a release where he's having a, a breakdown and he's having to kind of let go. And I don't know what happened to him. I'm not sure if he ended up living or if he ended, I don't know what happened. He may have passed away. I'm not 100% sure. I hope he worked through it, but... It was very symbolic. Now, the next stage that I was led to doing for the ritual was then going from 11th Street to the South Beach Pier on South Point of Ocean Drive, or not Ocean Drive necessarily, but the South Points of South Beach, Miami. There is a pier that's on the South Point. I was led to walking there, taking my skull ring, and then throwing it in the water specifically on the channel of where the cruise ships come in and out. The reason why I was led to throw it in the channel there is because I saw it as an energetic passage. So obviously it's a channel, right? It's a channel for cruise ships. Well, there's an energetic significance to that as well, a pretty profound one. So it's a channel of energy. Not only do ships come in and out of that, but it's an actual channel of energy. So I took this ring, which is a skull, I connected with it, I looked at it. It was like a representation of my old self. 
and everything that I had been through, all the pain and the suffering and the letting go and the unconscious awareness of a lot of things that I had going on during the time that I purchased that ring. And I took it and I could feel this like urge to not want to let it go. Like it was like stuff in my body was like, don't do it, don't do it. But I knew that I had to do this. It just felt like it was the next stage for my process. And I took it and I threw it in the water. And then it hit and then it started going down. And right after I threw it in, there was someone who was fishing, right? Like kind of right next to me. And right after it hit in the water, it was interesting. I don't know if they saw me throw it in the water, but then they casted their rod right where I threw it. So it was like I threw it in and it made a plop noise and then they casted their rod. So I don't know if they knew that that was my ring or they may have thought it was a fish, but I thought that that was symbolic too. They like casted to fish for it, to find it almost right after I had thrown it in. So that was interesting. Now, this is where things take a a massive collective uh, shift here. So as I finish that, now my time in Miami is done. I meant to go home now. So I have a long drive home because at this point it's almost 5 p.m. So there's a lot of traffic that is getting built up in Miami. So the drive normally is three hours. This made it about like four and a half hours. As I'm driving home and I'm sitting in traffic, I start to, I'm on my uh, YouTube and then I become aware that one of the artists from the band called One Direction, his name is Liam Payne, had just passed away, falling off of a building that was three stories high. And this is very interesting because this literally happened right when I was performing this ritual, literally at like the same time, right when I had finished this is when he fell off of this um, building that was three stories high in Argentina. Now, what makes this even more interesting is that Liam Payne calls Miami his home. Like this is known to be a hometown for him. And I believe he has a home in Miami, if I'm not mistaken. So why is this symbolic and what could this potentially represent? Well, the first thing we want to understand is that when it comes to symbolism, we have someone from a band that is called One Direction. So this whole commitment that I made was basically a commitment, a One Direction commitment to my most authentic self, to my most high potential and the reason why I'm here. And of course, as I'm initiating this for my inner process, this also helps to manifest for other people in the collective consciousness as well. It's through the principle of as within, as without. I am a representation of the entire collective consciousness. So as I'm doing these rituals to, you know, improve myself, this is having an influence on the world to some extent. So one direction itself was symbolic. The fact that the band Its name is One Direction, and almost all of you know about this band. That's how powerful and influential they are as an archetype of consciousness. So that was really symbolic, the One Direction, and that was the commitment. Now here's the other symbology. The feather that was on my hand, print, that's the symbol of air. Liam Payne fell from a building. That's also the element of air falling, falling off of something. You know, when you fall, you're in the air. I read the commitment paper three times. He fell from the third story. Okay. His name, Liam Payne. We could also sort of translate some of this to Liam to Leo. I am a Leo. And then Payne could also be a representation of P 
P-A-I-N. So his name is spelled P-A-Y-N-E, but you could also translate it to P-A-I-N, which is pain. And then Leo correspondence represents the archetype of strength for the lion. So what is the collective manifestation from this ritual? Well, this is actually something that I believe, this is my perspective, I've done this before, I've experienced this before, I have a lot of experience with this stuff. For those of you that follow my channel and understand my background and some of the things that I speak about, you have seen me go through these manifestations and have seen some pretty crazy things take place in my life but also corresponding in the collective consciousness. There's going to be a lot of you that don't fully know that yet, and that's okay. I'm going to explain it here. But what I believe is I believe on a deeper energetic level, as I was making this commitment and ritualizing it in the way that I was, I think that Liam Payne made a agreement to transition from his incarnation into the next to then offer himself as some form of evolutionary growth support for the collective consciousness. Now, I feel like the reason why he made that agreement is because he recognized that in this lifetime, he was sort of having enough. He was ready to move into a different experience. He had enough in this life. And I think, you know, when people kind of looked a little bit at his background, he was very much so struggling with substances. He had gotten himself clean for a little bit, but then he relapsed and then he had gotten into this uh, big issue with one of his ex-partners and he had went through a breakup and things in that nature. So he was kind of in a very traumatizing place in his life and there was a lot of pain there. And I don't think he really committed to wanting to heal through that in this lifetime. Well, that's obviously what he did because he passed. So I believe that this ritual somehow connected with him as a collective archetype of one direction, a member from one direction. And he basically transitioned from this life to offer as a collective support to actually be more in tune with that one direction of authenticity, that one direction of commitment to yourself. And if you look at some of his music, it's so symbolic because his literally the last song that he released before he passed was called teardrops which is the collective manifestation of us needing to process sadness and needing to process grief and having to be in tune with our emotions and feel those things and then you add in the layer of all of his fan base too which are a bunch of people that are obviously hurt and sad that he lost his life and that is a really you know unfortunate thing like i feel for for his family and everyone that was connected with him, even though I can feel that and it's an unfortunate circumstance, there are higher principles that are behind some of these things in regards to why they manifest and how they take place. So there are very much so truths in the universe that nothing happens for no reason and everything does happen in divine timing. So with that being said, there is a collective um, ripple effect from this ritual that I, I feel like I performed to allow the collective to get more in touch with their emotions and more in touch with their unconscious shadow within self. And of course, this also supports my inner process to better commit to myself and to find that one direction path of my most authentic expression and, you know, my most authentic path and there's just a lot of symbology there. You know, for me, for example, like substance abuse has been a major player in my life as well. And I've spent a lot of time and energy working through that and healing that. And clearly with Liam Payne, this was something that he was struggling with pretty significantly as well. And there must have been some resonance between me and him. And I didn't even know that. I didn't know him before any of this. I, I knew about the group One Direction, but I didn't really know about him personally. But... Once again, the healing component to this is that sometimes people will go through agreements on a deeper soul contractual level to offer a collective healing or to offer a collective support to then transition into a new incarnation. And I feel like in some regards, I was sort of that death angel 
to kind of set up the circumstances for this transition to unfold and to manifest. And that was obviously something that me and him were probably in resonance with or in alignment with. And that's exactly why it happened in the way that it did. Now, I know for the average person that's listening to this, this might sound a little bit strange and it might sound a little bit crazy and that's okay. I'm not asking you to believe what it is that I'm saying. You know, this is all me sharing my experience and I can have my experience, but you don't need to believe what I'm saying. But this is what I believe and I think that there are going to be a good amount of people that can understand what I'm communicating and can resonate with some of these deeper spiritual realities. And once again, the intention from what I was doing was a healing intention. It's meant to work through the deeper unconscious and to dissolve the things that are no longer met in my life and to be a representation of the authentic self and commitment to that path, commitment to that purpose. And then he passes away literally right after the ritual and it has this huge collective ripple, this huge collective event that takes place uh, within the masses. And then with his connection to Miami and then me being in Miami when all of this happened and then that one guy that was surrounded by the police on 11th Street, how he had fallen and then Liam Payne falls and the feather and the element of air and then also we could even look at it from the lens of Lucifer's fall. You know, they say Lucifer fell from heaven, so to speak, the fallen angel. There's even like a myth mythological component that could almost kind of go behind these things as well, which is a really abstract way to kind of dissect this. But overall, this was meant to open up new layers of emotional processing for the collective consciousness and, of course, for myself to be able to heal from core childhood wounds and even ancestral wounds so that as a collective, we can be more uh, aligned with who we actually are and so that we can better evolve with the planet as a whole. So this was the ritual that it was that I did in South Beach, Miami, October 16th. And this is some of the effects that have manifested directly after this ritual. So with that being said, I actually have a mentorship call that is coming up in 10 minutes. So I got to wrap this up really quick. If you thought this video was interesting, definitely slam the thumbs up button drop down in the comment section and share with me some of your thoughts. Share with me some of your understandings and some of your ideas on what it is that I'm communicating here. Hit the notification bell, get notified whenever I post this content. You don't wanna be missing out. And also subscribe to the YouTube channel because that's gonna further connect you to everything that I do. Oh, and let me just throw this one last piece in. After performing this ritual, I wanna mention this my own energy went through a massive death cycle. So I could feel a lot of heaviness. I could feel almost like a sense of vertigo, like I was losing balance and I was spinning. It was, this ritual that I did was really powerful to the extent where my own body almost didn't have capacity to really process everything in that moment. And it was actually a little bit scary, the amount of energetic surge that I felt coming into my body. But, this is not something that I'm new to. I've experienced this before, so I just allow myself to be with it as best as I can, and I surrender to it and dissolve what I need to, and that's what I went through. So I want you all as the listeners to understand that doing this type of ritual work and having these effects within the collective consciousness, but also within self, it comes with a cost, and part of that cost is when you open up these doors within your unconscious, within self, using occult science, and then it has collective effects, all of this operates through the law of cause and effect, through karma. So that means if I'm the representation of the focal point of this ritual with my intention for healing and dissolving and processing you know, core wounds, and then that starts manifesting collectively, I'm gonna also have to process a pretty heavy density load of repressed stuff in my system to be able to kind of counterbalance some of the stuff that's happening in the collective. So when you do this type of work, it is something you have to be ready to go through and something you have to be ready to process because 
it's not something you just do and then disconnect from it and then you don't experience anything. It, it transforms your own life very significantly and that's not always comfortable. Matter of fact, it's most of the times very not comfortable, but it can be really powerful if you know what you're working with and how to work with it. That's why I always talk about having a foundation. So yeah, so that's that. Um, if you are interested in any of my services, go into my description below and check them out. Definitely make sure you take advantage of my Patreon. I have a Universe B ritual service that is performed on the 29th of every month. It is an energetic transfer through a cult ritual from me to you, supporting you through your development process, working with some of the deepest layers of your unconscious mind. This is not a joke. This is like a real deal energetic transfer that a lot of people are taking advantage of and are seeing some very healthy results from as they're learning how to heal trauma and how to work with these repressed parts of themselves. And as you get to do that within time, you get to start merging more with your shadow. You get to start experiencing the power and the hidden gifts of your unconscious. And that's when your life starts to really improve. And I would say most importantly, you start to ground more so into the authentic self for whatever that is and whatever that looks like for you. So if you wanna take advantage of it, first link in the YouTube description. All of the other links are gonna be all these different services that you can utilize. All right, with that being said, we're gonna wrap it up here. I hope you all have an amazing rest of the day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.